After Disney confirms spinoff movies, rumors hit a fever pitch, and Toy Fair 2013 Fallout. It's Wednesday, February 20th, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. Following official confirmation by Disney CEO Bob Iger that there would in fact be supplemental Star Wars movies standing alone and filling in the empty spaces between the release of episodes 7, 8, and 9 supposedly taking place over the six-year period beginning in 2015, the Internet immediately came alive with rumors, hypothesis, and well-established fact about who those movies would be featuring as their prime characters. Entertainment Weekly came to the party with the most authoritative-sounding report, citing sources, quote, close to the projects, which confirmed that they would be about a young Han Solo, focusing on his origin story, as well as a bounty hunter adventure featuring Boba Fett at the center of the action. In the very same article citing the certainty that these two projects had been given the green light, Entertainment Weekly hedged their bets, saying that, of course, such projects could be changed or sidelined or scrapped altogether. But, of course, the Internet Echo Chamber took this story and ran with it, as well as another one cited by Ain't It Cool News, which stated that there would in fact be a Yoda-focused film. All of these stories, of course, have their supporting facts and hypotheses, but, of course, until there is official confirmation from Lucasfilm or Disney, they have to be filed under wild internet speculation. In fact, just one day after the initial Entertainment Weekly story ran, a source at Disney quickly went to Yahoo News, to pour cold water over the rumors, and to state quite emphatically that as yet, no decisions had been made on which characters would be the focus of the new standalone projects. The toy industry descended upon New York City last weekend for the annual media blitz that is North American Toy Fair. As always, many of the Star Wars licensees were present in showing off 2013's upcoming product. Perhaps not surprisingly, many of the licensees appeared to be left in the lurch by Lucasfilm's decision not to release Attack of the Clones in 3D, as we had earlier been told to expect. Danish brickmaker Lego showed off a number of new Star Wars sets, many of which focused on Episode 2, including a new gunship, an arena battle with Count Dooku and Yoda, as well as a long-awaited replacement for the ATTE one of the most popular and expensive sets on the secondary market. Many of the action figures that Hasbro had premiered last summer at San Diego and in Orlando have now been repackaged and repurposed for release later in 2013 as part of the Black Line, and not in the revived Build-A-Droid line, which has now officially been cancelled. Also now apparently officially cancelled are Clone Wars figures. Debuting in 2008 along with Season 1 of the Animated 3D series, the subline of animated style figures exceeded over 100 figures over the years and managed with some success to focus on both the important recurring characters as well as some of the more interesting background characters. Along with most Hasbro product, of course, over the past two years, figures had become somewhat harder to find and numbers released were much smaller and characters based on designs from the more recent seasons seem to be somewhat lacking in the line. Instead, now, Hasbro will focus on the black line of both 6 and 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, as well as a revised Movie Heroes line of figures, which will be cheaper and more kid-friendly at $6 suggested retail price, and feature a Kenner-esque 5 points of articulation each. There will be a number of exclusive vehicles later in the year, most of which will feature vintage-style packaging, but most notably, two of them will be exclusive to Amazon.com. These are an Empire Strikes Back-themed Boba Fett Slave One with a Han Solo and Carbonite, as well as a Return of the Jedi-themed TIE Interceptor. These will be the first exclusives for the Internet's largest retailer, and, if nothing else, can be seen as a symbolic changing of the economic guard 
as the world's largest brick-and-mortar retailer, Walmart, as of this point, has no exclusive for 2013. Pictures of the Hasbro, Lego, and other major Star Wars licensees Toy Fair offerings are widely available on a number of the more popular Star Wars collecting websites. Two new Disney-exclusive Star Tours 3-packs were announced this week. As in the past, there is a Rebel-themed set featuring a G2 droid, C-3PO, and an RX droid entitled Star Tours Sector 2 Security, as well as an Imperial-themed set, the Search for the Rebel Spy, which will feature a Signal droid, a Seeker droid, and an Imperial Sky Trooper. No prices were announced for the sets, but they will be available in May of this year, coinciding with the Disney World Hollywood Studios Star Wars weekends, and they will spread to the other Disney resorts soon thereafter. Gentle Giant's jumbo vintage reproduction figures keep coming. Pre-orders for the rocket-firing Boba Fett vintage figure are currently processing and can be expected to arrive on porches across the country over the next week while the Premier Guild exclusive Gamorrean Guard, which includes an equally oversized jumbo reproduction Power of the Force coin, is already arriving. Those who have received it and have taken time to look at the card back noticed that 10 new jumbo figures are announced via the card back. These are Zuckus, Forlom, Dengar, Luke Skywalker in Bespin Fatigues, an Adat Driver, a Rebel Trooper from Hoth, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo from Hoth, and a Snow Trooper. And, when those figures are released, nearly half of the original Kenner line will have been reproduced in Gentle Giant's 12-inch line. The next entry in Sideshow's Mythos line of premium format figures, which features popular characters in slightly expanded universe situations, is Darth Vader, and it goes up for pre-order tomorrow, Thursday, February 21st. A couple of new announcements regarding Star Wars Celebration 2 Europe. Lucasfilm's Pablo Hidalgo will be appearing at the con as a master of ceremonies and a host at a number of events. We also now have a list of the art show participants who will have exclusive art available for those who can make it to the show in Germany this summer. I've posted a link to the names, but none of the art is as yet available to see. Also, VIP tickets to the convention are available for sale on the official site. For only 550 euros, possessors of the Jedi Master VIP Pass will be entitled to cut in a lot of lines, get in a little early, and enjoy some exclusive meet and greet of Star Wars celebrities. It is interesting to note that these tickets are very limited, and for both of the last two celebrations in Orlando, they sold out within minutes of being offered. Yet, they are still available as of this recording, over a week after they originally were made available. I'm not saying that this is a bad sign for attendance at the show. I'm just saying. Regardless of what ticket you have, Star Wars Celebration 2 Europe will be held at Essen, Germany, July 26th through the 28th. Do you have a PlayStation 3 or a PS Vita? If so, Zen Studios has a new Star Wars pinball game available for download. Zen Pinball 2 is a popular pinball-themed game for those platforms, and an Empire Strikes Back-themed table will be available as downloadable content later this week. At your local comic book shop is issue number two of Dark Horse's new Star Wars title, and next week we'll see publication of Agent of Empire Hard Targets number five and Dawn of the Jedi Prisoner of Bogan number three. Although there has been no official indication that casting has begun for either Star Wars Episode Seven or any of the recently announced spin-off films, it appears that when it does begin, there will be no shortage of applicants for the roles. This week's self-proclaimed applicants include Carrie Russell, who has worked with Star Wars director J.J. Abrams in the past on the television show Felicity, who says that she would do anything for J.J., Fanboy favorite Olivia Munn, currently star of the HBO series The Newsroom, has expressed an interest in joining the Star Wars cast. Those two actresses join an ever-growing list of Star Wars alum who want to get the band back together, including this week Ewan McGregor, 
who insists that he would love a Star Wars fresh start with new movies and an Obi-Wan Kenobi-themed spinoff. Frank Oz, the original and only voice of Yoda, as well as the puppeteer behind the diminutive Jedi in episodes 5 and 6, has expressed that he would be willing to return for a Yoda-based spinoff film, while his arch-nemesis, Ian McDiarmid, who played Palpatine and Darth Sidious in all their incarnations in five of the six films, has expressed that he would be happy to return if they found a way to bring his character back, <clears throat> Palpatine origin story, while another fan favorite, Jeremy Bullock, the actor inside the Boba Fett suit in episodes 5 and 6, has said that he would be happy to be involved in a Boba Fett film. But wait, it's not limited to just actors. John Williams, the prolific composer who scored all of the Star Wars films and just about every other big film, has stated his willingness to return to score the upcoming films. But certainly the rumor with potentially the biggest impact, and also the weirdest pedigree, has to be that concerning Harrison Ford, everyone's favorite Caribbean smuggler turned rebel hero, Han Solo. A reporter, Umberto Gonzalez, from the Latino Review, appeared on Fox News Latino and stated that a deal to bring Ford back for the sequel films was all but official. Naturally, a story of such import was immediately picked up by almost every media outlet, many of which were quick to vouch for the past accuracy of entertainment reporting by the Latino Review. And much like the J.J. Abrams rumors of a couple weeks ago, no one rushed to deny Ford's return. However, in the wake of these rumors, Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, spoke with Entertainment Tonight and confirmed that while he, Ford, as well as Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, had been talking to Lucasfilm about reprising their roles, at this point, no agreement had been reached. Hamill's interview also had one other interesting tidbit. The voice of the clown Prince of Crime informed Entertainment Tonight that he, as well as the other stars, had been assured by Lucasfilm that if no agreement was reached to cast them in the upcoming films, that the characters would simply be written out of the story rather than recast with different actors. Whenever it comes time to make these casting decisions, they will receive the full, undiluted attention of Lucasfilm CEO Kathleen Kennedy. It was announced this week that Kennedy, who was currently nominated for an Oscar for her work in production of Lincoln, was leaving a similarly situated position on Jurassic Park 4, which is expected to be released in 2014. Kennedy, who has a long-established working relationship with Steven Spielberg, was the producer of each of the three previous Jurassic Park films. And we close on a melancholy note this week, as we have to acknowledge the passing of Stuart Freeborn, the accomplished and gifted makeup artist behind the original Star Wars trilogy characters, including, most notably, Yoda. Freeborn, who also did the makeup for such famous films as 2001, famously took the Ralph McQuarrie sketches for Yoda, in which the character looked more like a little gnome, and developed the face that we all came to know by taking a design based on his own face and adding elements from the face of German physicist Albert Einstein, who Freeborn considered to be the smartest person ever, and would therefore lend the ancient Jedi a bit of intellectual gravitas. Stuart Freeborn was 98 years old. We know almost nothing about the upcoming Star Wars films, aside from the fact that they're going to happen, and we have some writers and a director. But at this stage, just three months after the announcement of the Disney acquisition of Lucasfilm and that these films were going to take place, everything seems different. I find it interesting that there's already something of a revisionist movement out there that believes Star Wars was about to die in 2012. But if you were really paying attention, you know that's not true. According to Lucasfilm, Celebration 6 was the biggest attended celebration ever. We had the films coming out in 3D. We had Celebration Europe. We had the Clone Wars. There was plenty keeping Star Wars alive. I was there in 85 and saw Star Wars die then. I saw the Star Trek franchise die 10 years ago. Whatever was going on with Star Wars last year was not the death of a franchise. But it was certainly a franchise that didn't know where it was going. And on top of that, there were still a lot of people who were very bitter about the prequels. But over the last three months, I've seen 
seen that change into something like a naive excitement that I haven't seen since 1997. The pre-prequel days were full of excitement and optimism, and for the next couple years we're going to get to relive it all over again. Simply put, it's fun to see people excited about Star Wars again. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news and notes and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit our website, www.thisweekinstarwars.com, where you can find links to the rest of our media empire, including our breaking news Twitter feed and our Facebook page. If you have comments, questions, or news suggestions, we encourage you to write us at host at thisweekinstarwars.com. Help us grow the community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive review at iTunes. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to.